my friends, it's Derek, who's chuckling with Finnish people. And tonight I want to talk about an old relationship maxim, maxim, which is don't go to bed angry. Well, that's a good enough axiom, I suppose. But there's a reality that some parties in a relationship need time to process stuff and or aren't ready to finish talking it out right now. People sometimes need a hiatus to cool down and or to reflect. So one possible point of conflict in relationships, and it's certainly a point of conflict between me and Kimberly, is the time frame in terms of dealing with things and the directness with which both parties want things dealt. I tend to feel good when everything's resolved and nothing is, there aren't any active points of contention. In other words, we're not actively disagreeing about anything. And when we are actually disagreeing about something, and or fighting, and or not being very nice to each other, or whatever, then I want to resolve that. Now for me, resolving that involves talking, both parties talking about their perspectives on it, so that they can come to some sort of agreement. But for other parties, what they really want to do is spend time with the reality um, try to reset emotionally and then talk about it later. Problems of course arise if the talking about a later part doesn't really happen. So that's a potential point of conflict between parties who want to talk about it now. Either they're going to get their way, in which case the other party is going to feel rushed or forced, or they're not going to get their way, in which the other party is probably not really going to want to revisit the topic later. So it makes for a tricky communicative dynamic. And of course, as with all communication problems, um, ones arising over this time frame issue are ultimately issues of trust. So, going out with me is kind of a unique experience because I'm <laughs> Well, I'm a debate coach, and people don't like answering my questions. The reason is, they don't know where I'm going with them, but a lot of times they think they do. Regardless, I, they don't want to give me anything to work with, because they assume I'm up to no good. I'm not necessarily up to no good at all. In fact, I'm usually up to good. I'm determining for my own purposes what I need to know in order to make my own conclusions. And sometimes in the process, my questioning will dismantle existing statements. Like, you know, now you previously said blah, 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 blah. And then recently you said blah, blah, blah. But if both of them be true, then... How do you manage this this contradiction? And they go, ba da ba da ba da ba da, you know. But I understand that they don't like to have that kind of stuff pointed out. That's fair enough. But more often than not, I'm not going there. I'm just trying to nail down a couple of basics so I can do some work internally with it. And. Remember, ultimately, no matter what else happens, I'm not a judger. So, I'm not trying to 
nail down forever statuses. I'm there to nail down what it is we're working with. Still, I understand that it's asking a lot of trust to blindly ask someone to answer all my questions without knowing anything about what I'm going to do with the answers. However, the alternative is to say, I don't afford that process legitimacy. And then to do that is to deny me my nature. That's how I understand things. So, relationships can be complicated. Should you always resolve a conflict before bed? Not necessarily. Usually, a conflict is going to resolve in one of three ways. One party is going to admit they're at fault and take the blame and apologize. The other party is going to admit they're at fault, take the blame and apologize. Or it's going to be unresolved and the two will leave it as it was. Um, only to return to it again and again until it gets resolved. So, are there resolves, resolutions that are win-win, or neither party is right or wrong or whatever? Um, well, I mean, they're sort of like behavioral prescriptions, I suppose, but those are predicated on identifying where lies the problem. It may be the case that both parties are guilty of separate problems, in which case then both parties should um, acknowledge that, affirm statements to that effect, and resolve to at least attempt, you know, to keep it in mind in, in an earnest way. The thing is, it's also about about whether or not either or both parties are in a real state of of like peacemaking of being fair and reasonable and a lot of times in the course of a fight it'll kind of go back and forth like one party will be spent with the venom for a second and try to be reasonable but then the other party is still reacting to the previously spent venom they get all worked out, maybe then they're reasonable for a second, and then, you know, goes back and forth until finally, one way or the other, the fight ends. So, ultimately, what happens in relationships when people get hurt feelings or when they're not getting along is almost always one, both parties blame each other. So if if it's if it's a straight up like um, hey I asked you not to take that jacket out side and you did and now you ruined it but I needed it for today you know then I guess the other person's party's supposed to go like oh that was my bad they're not supposed to fight you about it like why are you being so fussy? Because they have a legitimate complaint, right? So, but most things aren't exactly like that. They're not that clear cut. It's more like, well, you always and you never and all that kind of stuff. So, the takeaway from this, I suppose, is every relationship has its challenges. And among the challenges can be Communication styles. Communication should be ideally easy between partners, but that's predicated on trust, which is hard to build and easy to lose. So, 
it's important then that both parties be gentle to the best of their abilities. And remember that forcing shit upon the other, whether it's because you really, really, really want an answer now, or whether it's because you really, 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 really don't want to talk about that. It's, it's a way of it's a way of not respecting what the other person is saying. So if Kimberly is saying to me, I really don't want to talk to you right now, Eric. Even though I really, really, really want to stand there and keep talking to her. I reluctantly go outside and make a video. And I understand that my time frame is not hers. So, I guess the takeaway is be good to each other, try to trust each other, and remember that fights are inevitable. There's a certain amount of checking against a standard that one does. It was like, oh, are we fighting too much? Is this a good relationship? Maybe we're fighting too much, yada, yada, yada. That kind of stuff needs to be settled on carefully. So, understand that certain fights are good fights. Certain fights are bad fights. Good fights tend not to get repeated over and over again. Bad fights tend to get repeated over and over again. Because ultimately, the difference between a good fight and a bad fight stems from the ability of both parties to keep in mind that they both ultimately want the best for each other and for the relationship. And also, they clearly resolve points in dispute. So, if there is something in dispute, An ideal resolution involves both parties doing their earnest best to understand and maybe even represent the other party's position and consider its legitimacy to the best of their respective abilities, despite the fact that their own interest obviously lies with their own position. So, for me then, the challenge is to figure out, to understand Kimberly's position of not wanting to be hounded with rhetorical precise, rhetorically precise uh, questioning chains. <laughs> yeah, it's like, from, from her perspective, that's kind of inherently invalid. Like, look, you're treating me like a witness on the stand in court, and I shouldn't have to feel like I'm undergoing the Spanish Inquisition every time I say something. And... Ultimately, I feel attacked when you start trying to make me explain myself when something I've said might seem contradictory, but I never thought about it that much in the first place, and you're attaching all these additional meanings that I never intended, 
And even if those meanings are implied by what I said, that assumes that what I said can be taken um, objectively like that beyond the moment in which it was said, where it was probably said as much for FE reasons as anything else. Thus, when you enforce your TI standards upon my previous statements or current statements or whatever else, I know going in they're not going to withstand scrutiny necessarily because I didn't mean them all that precisely like you think. I just was trying to say something that was going to have FE impact 3. But I didn't really think about all the implications of what I was saying. So when I'm then subject to scrutiny as though everything that is implied by what I said is, is necessarily true unless I was lying, that is to put me in an unfair kind of TI constraint that undermines my ability to communicate effectively without feeling as though I'm subject to um, inspection and judgment. So that would be my take on her position. Um, She's not here to give me, to give my take on my position, but my position is basically, just answer my questions. Don't get defensive. You don't know where I'm going with them. Just answer them. When you get avoidant, that's when we have problems. Which is the winning case? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've had this, I've had this same fight with so many people in life. I mean, online mostly, you know, here and talking with tennis people. It's a fight where somebody goes, well, where are you going with that? Or why are you asking me that? That's the point. You don't get to know where I'm going with it. You don't get to know why I'm asking it. That way I can put more credibility into your answer. Everyone assumes I'm going somewhere bad. Sometimes I am. Usually I'm not. I'm just trying to figure shit out like everybody else. So, anyhow, where did you poop? I smell it. It was recent. Get away from me. Fucking cats. They, they poop three times their weight in poops a day. I don't know how. They don't eat that much food. So you put a kitten's poop together into a ball, it's the size of a human head. That's one day's poop. Don't have kittens. It's a bad idea. Thanks for watching Talking with Fans, people. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.